back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for taking a minute to stop by. I hope you decide to stick around. Um, I would love to have you here. If you're returning, of course, as always, thank you for your continued support. So I'm going to jump right into today's video. I do want you to stop and ask yourself this question and leave a comment down below. If you don't mind, just tell me your thoughts about this. I want to know if this will change the way you prep. Um, so I'm just going to dive right into today's video. So I know there's been lots of talk about like the cricket flour and like the crickets that they're putting into our food, but I want to let you know um, and ask you actually, did you guys know that we've been eating bugs, bugs, poop, um, mold, you name it probably, we've probably been eating it for a while. Um, and it's actually known by the FDA and it's something that the FDA has approved. I know it's hard to believe, but I mean, you know, that kind of goes without saying you can everybody has their own beliefs about everything when it comes to you know those people that are in dc but fda even has like a little booklet in regards to this that you can look up and you can read like in depth more about this so i'm going to speak on it a little bit and i'm actually going to give you um i'm going to talk to you about peanut butter and try to give you the breakdown just for that item but mind you different foods have a different amount of bugs that they're allowed to have um, you're probably wondering like why are there bugs in there and the FDA is okay with this It's a certain amount of bugs that each food group or food item can have as well as a certain amount of hairs rodent hairs um, There are it's a certain amount of mold that can be in foods So as a kid, we were always worried about the five second rule if we drop a piece of food or something on the floor We would hurry up and pick it up because you know, it didn't count if it was five seconds, but after this um, it kind of puts a lot of things like into perspective, but again, this affects all of our foods. Like everything that we eat that's from the store, it affects it. It's just, we don't see it. Like our eye doesn't see it. Sometimes it does. Obviously we go and we get grapes and the grapes are soggy or have mold on them. Yes, we see them, but there's so many things that are invisible um, to like just our eye that we have consumed so much. I mean, between rodent hairs, between mold, um, I just think we, well, I know that we've consumed so much. So I know a couple of years ago, I was in Domino's. I was going in there to pick up my order and the guy that was making the pizza, I remember seeing that he had hairy arms and he was just taking the pizza dough and kind of tossing it on both sides, you know, of his arms. And at the time I remember thinking, gosh, that's gross. Like what if a hair goes in there, you know, just because it's like bound to have a couple of hairs in it, right? That's like the least of, you know, my worries. So um, again, we've all been affected by this, but again, does this change the way you prep? Do you kind of just, I mean, there's just so much going on with our food anyways at this point. It's like, it's unbelievable. So one thing that I did find alarming as I was reading certain parts of this FDA booklet or handbook is that they said that this does not cause like any health issues as far as like the rodents, um, hairs, or like anything else that can be in there, like feces. Yeah, they're saying that this doesn't cause like a health issue and it's pretty much not cause for concern. That's very alarming to me. Um, I don't feel like they know what may affect one person. And we have known for a fact that there have been a lot of recalls on food for salmonella. It's like, okay, all of this, if you think about it, it all goes hand in hand. There have been tons of recalls over the whole summer, the entire year. I feel like every other week at some point there was a recall. So this kind of puts things into perspective, um, just knowing everything that's going on. And you got to keep in mind that there have been employee and staff shortages. So with that goes in, like, I guess it's going to affect like quality control is what I'm trying to say. It's all like a quality control issue. I mean, it was already there, but if you have, if you lack employees, you're going to have more mistakes. You're going to have things that happen that won't be caught. So that can all attribute to this. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and insert the clip, my next clip in this video. So the food item that I'm going to talk about today is going to be the peanut butter. I'm just choosing the peanut butter because as you can see here, it's one of the most controlled foods on the FDA list. So that just kind of puts everything into perspective. If this peanut butter can have so many issues, you can only imagine the other foods. So an average of one or more rodent hairs in 30 or so Insect fragments are allowed for every 100 grams, which is 3.5 ounces. The typical serving size for peanut butter is two tablespoons. So this means that an average peanut butter and jelly or 
peanut butter sandwich, not including the jelly. Just know that if you're going to add jelly, it's going to be more um, that this would have in about eight insect fragments and a tiny bit of rodent filth. So after that, like I said, it's good to do your own research. You can just go to the FDA site and there's like tons of information on this. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this. Um, again, we're kind of at their grace. It's not like a whole lot we can do unless we grow our own food. And like I said, we might be able to do like gardens and everything, but not everybody's and not everyone can you know get like a cow and get everything like that and just completely be self-sufficient and not have to rely on the grocery stores and manufacturers so again thank you so much for watching and i will see you guys in the next video